Hey there, Swarmers. Oh, it is so good to see you all. It's definitely been a while and let me assure you this busy bee has missed you all dearly. Though of course you are in the best of hands with our beautiful co-founder, Crystal. Thank you for joining us in the hive. And by now you probably know what I'm gonna say. Some things never change. Hit that subscribe button, the like notifications, all the bells and buttons. And if you're feeling crazy, you might even want to give us a share too. We appreciate it and you so, so, so much. Okay, jumping right in, we're gonna explore one of the up and comers in the energy world. You've likely heard hydrogen energy suggested as one of the best ways for us to decarbonize our energy production and transportation systems, and subsequently save the planet. But there are various types of hydrogen energy, and you know what that means. They're not all created equal. You've probably noticed that brown, gray, blue, and green hydrogen are terms which are becoming more commonplace in energy vernacular. And we'll explain those, all of them, in a minute. But that's not the whole hydrogen rainbow. So we'll also talk about pink, turquoise, and yellow hydrogen. But before we dive into this delightful energy color spectrum, let's start with some basics. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, and also the simplest and lightest element on the periodic table, with only one proton per atom of hydrogen. It occurs naturally on Earth only as a compound with other elements in liquid, gas, or solid form. When it's separated from these other elements and molecules, it can be used as an energy source in either liquid or gas form. And this energy can be electricity or fuel. It actually takes more energy to produce hydrogen, and that means separating it from the other molecular elements, than it provides. It has the lowest energy content by volume compared to other fuels, at about four times less than gasoline. But it has the highest energy content by weight of any common fuel, at approximately three times more than gasoline. This has led to its use as a rocket fuel, and in some fuel cells producing electricity on certain spacecrafts. But back to that color palette. Natural hydrogen is actually colorless. So the color labels are applied to denote the process or original energy source used to produce or separate the hydrogen. But bear in mind that there are no set guidelines or naming conventions. So sometimes the definitions for each color may evolve over time and may vary from country to country. Today, we are going to run through those which are most universally accepted. Let's start with black or brown hydrogen. These two are almost the same thing, hydrogen obtained from burning coal. Whether the coal is black, bituminous, or brown, lignite, determines the color label. The bottom line is that production of hydrogen this way is exceedingly environmentally damaging. The gasification of the coal, which is heating it to temperatures of above 700 degrees Celsius without combustion, creates syngas. The hydrogen can then be separated from the other elements using absorbers and membranes. But this process also creates carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Neither of these gases can be captured and used, so are just being emitted into the atmosphere. Gray hydrogen is currently the most common form of hydrogen production and comes from a process called steam methane reformation. A catalyst is used to react methane with high temperature steam, resulting in hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide. There's then a subsequent process where carbon monoxide, steam, and a catalyst react to produce more hydrogen and carbon dioxide. And finally, the carbon dioxide is removed to leave only hydrogen. The CO2 byproduct of this process is thought to be in the region of 830 million metric tons each year. For perspective, that's equivalent to the emissions of the UK and Indonesia combined. Next, we have blue hydrogen. In this process, once the hydrogen has been produced using the steam reformation discussed just a moment ago, the CO2 is captured and stored using a carbon capture and storage facility. But as is becoming more understood and accepted, CCS is somewhat of a pipe dream, being that the tech is years away from reaching adequate scale to have a positive impact on the CO2 we produce and due to the extremely high cost of building the facilities. Up next is green hydrogen. 
The clue is in the title here. This is the one we should really aim for. Green hydrogen is produced through an electrochemical reaction which splits water into its two components, hydrogen and oxygen. The key is that the electrolyzers are powered by renewable energy sources, thereby producing hydrogen with zero carbon dioxide emissions during the process. And now for pink hydrogen, which is sometimes also known as purple hydrogen or red hydrogen. All three colors refer to hydrogen produced by the power of nuclear energy, but through slightly different processes. With the French passion for nuclear power, it's no surprise that President Macron has labeled pink hydrogen as a primary asset for the country. But of course, nuclear power is both an emotive and politically charged subject. Turquoise hydrogen is the newest color on the spectrum and is still in experimental stages yet to be scaled up. A process called methane pyrolysis is used to break down methane into its components of hydrogen and solid carbon, also called carbon black. This powder can be used in printing, construction, or the electronics industry. Alternatively, solid carbon can be stored, which is easier to do than with gaseous carbon. But while on the surface this seems to be a low carbon technique, further research is required to ensure that the heat needed and the methane itself don't tip it into the carbon intensive category of energy production. Yellow hydrogen is another newcomer to the rainbow, and most commonly refers to hydrogen produced by solar powered electrolysis. But the term can also be used to describe hydrogen produced through electrolysis powered from a combination of sources, renewable and fossil based. Lastly, we have white hydrogen. This is pure, naturally occurring geological hydrogen. Currently, we don't have strategies to extract and exploit this resource. So which color or process is going to be the best to use for our future energy needs? It seems clear that green hydrogen, sometimes now called clean hydrogen, is the answer. But the path to scaling this isn't easy or cheap. Current costs in the US put green hydrogen at about three times as much as natural gas. But as we know from the dramatic reduction in renewable energy costs over the last five years, we can expect to see this cost drop rapidly soon, but not right now. McKinsey has reported that by 2030 in the United States, there could be approximately 700,000 jobs and $140 billion in revenue from hydrogen to meet the expected demand of 17 million metric tons per year. For perspective, the current market is 11 million metric tons per year. There are lots of exciting developments around green hydrogen and how to produce it effectively and efficiently. One such project is the use of unrecyclable plastic and other solid municipal waste as the feedstock for the production of green hydrogen. There are several companies in California, the UK, and Europe using gasification of waste to make clean hydrogen. We think that pink, purple, red hydrogen may also have a place in the future mix of hydrogen production. But of course, absolute utmost care needs to be exercised. We acknowledge that the debate around nuclear energy is another example of a potential solution that's not clear cut and black and white. Two things are for certain. The need to move away from gray and brown or black hydrogen as quickly as possible. And the caution needed when blue hydrogen is purported as being a solution. Well, Swarmers, that's it on our rainbow of hydrogen today. Thank you as always for being here with us, learning with us, hanging out, and discussing more of these interesting ideas for helping us to navigate a more sustainable, less carbon intensive future. We would love to hear your thoughts on hydrogen energy and the processes for producing it. And let us know if you'd like us to delve into the actual cases for hydrogen energy, both as electricity provider and straight up fuel. We want to provide the answers for any and all of your questions. So just drop them in the comments and we'll get right to it. Until then, we will see you next time, Swarmers. Stay safe, stay sustainable, and be your best self. See what I did there? See you soon.